Hey guys, Mr. Cheeps here. Staking things together in Blender can be fun, easy, and exciting. So let's talk about rigid body constraints. Constraints are an abstract thing binding two rigid body objects together. Constraints are typically put together using an empty and linking two objects to it. Going to the physics tab on this empty, we can make it a rigid body constraint and select these two cubes that conveniently just appeared. If I angle this plane and start our simulation, we can see that the cubes will be linked together. This is a boring demonstration though, so let's look at some cooler stuff. Yeah, that right there is why we need to learn about constraints. So if I select this empty and go over to the settings, there are a couple of things we can mess with. We will go over these other types of constraints in the future, but we are only going to use the fixed constraint in this video. These three toggles under the settings menu are pretty important. This first one, obviously, decides if the constraint is active or not. Disable collisions will determine if the constrained objects can collide with each other. If this is toggled on and the constraint allows the objects to get close enough to collide, then they will just pass through each other if this is enabled. And the last one right here, breakable, is definitely one of my favorite settings. This just allows the constraint to break if the objects have a certain amount of force applied to them set by this threshold value. The Objects menu is where you can select the two rigid bodies that you want your constraint to affect, and this Override Iterations toggle will use this iterations value for how many times this individual constraint is calculated, rather than using the Solver Iterations value under the Rigid Body World settings that we've looked at in the past. So those are the basic settings for a rigid body constraint. If we switch to a different type of constraint, we can see a lot more options, but we will go over those in future videos. Let's make a simple animation to see how these work, rather than just having me monologue for the rest of this video. Start by adding in a plane and scaling it up. This will act as our ground. I'm going to add in a cube and move it up so it's right about resting on the plane, and I'm going to enter edit mode. A simple house shape is all we need, so I'm just going to add in a loop cut and move up the middle edge. I'm also going to make the house just a bit shorter to finish off this epic model. Let's make both of these passive rigid bodies as they aren't going to move in the simulation I'm envisioning. Now let's add in a few objects to blow around. I'm going to add in a cube, enter edit mode, and scale it until it takes the shape of a deck. A few legs would be nice, so I'm going to add another cube and model it into a good shape. Position this under the corner of the deck, but make sure that it isn't intersecting with the ground or the deck or clipping through. Then we can duplicate it and move it over to the other corner. Let's make the deck and both the legs active rigid body objects and increase the weight of the deck to 2 kilograms so that it's slightly heavier than the legs. Now we can start adding in our constraints. Create a plane axis empty and make it a rigid body constraint. Turn on breakable and turn off disable collisions. We essentially want to use our constraints to stick the legs and the deck to the house and ground, but we also want it to be breakable so that we can demonstrate how we can blow this deck away with enough wind. I'm going to start by positioning this next to the bottom of the leg and selecting the ground and the leg as the constrained objects, sticking this leg to the ground. Then I'm going to duplicate this empty and do the same thing for the other leg. We can see that the legs are now attached and will not fall over. Now I'm going to duplicate both of those empties and position them near the top of the legs and under the deck. Just replace the ground plane with the deck in both of these constraint settings. Now the deck is attached to the legs. Duplicate the empties one last time and use them to connect the deck to the house. 
We could do this with just one constraint, but two will give our simulation a bit more variance. I'm going to go through and change the breakable threshold on my constraints, setting it to one for these ones attaching the deck to the house. The constraints holding the legs to the ground are going to be set at 1.2, and the ones sticking the legs to the deck will be set at 0.5. Now that our whole house is held together, we can add in a wind object. I'm going to position this over to the left of the house because I'm going to position my camera right here angled at the house and that way the deck will be blowing from the left to the right of the screen. Make sure the wind is pointing in that direction and increase the power to about 700. So obviously this isn't blowing our deck away yet, but it is making it move a little bit. To add in some more control, we can keyframe the strength of our wind object. I'm going to select it and right click on the strength value box, inserting a keyframe with this button right here. I'm also going to duplicate this in the outliner so it holds at this strength until frame 40. Now I'm going to move on to frame 60 and bring the strength down to 200. Right click, insert a keyframe and move on. I'm going to continue through increasing the strength each time the wind picks up, 750, 800, just going through these cycles of high strength to low strength. With our current setup, everything will blow away with a wind strength of 1000, so be sure to reach that at some point. If parts of your simulation aren't blowing away at the right point or aren't blowing away at all, you may have to tweak the threshold on the breakable value on your individual constraints. You also may need to change the wind value a little bit, just mess around with it until it looks good. This is what I ended up with. So as you can see now, our deck and our legs are blowing away from the house once the wind reaches a high enough strength. You may be tempted to turn up the steps per second and solver iterations under the rigid body world settings just to get a higher quality simulation. Something that I've noticed is that constraints will generally get stronger if you increase those values, the steps per second and solver iterations. If you want to increase the quality of your simulation, you may need to increase the wind strength or weaken your constraints. If you want to expand on that house demonstration, upload it somewhere and leave a link in the comments. I would love to see anyone who adds something like shingles, extra pieces of the deck, anything like that. I just want to see what you guys create with this. Next episode, we are going to look more into the types of constraints and some more advanced stuff we can do with them. Until then, thank you for watching and have a great day.